Okay, we're going to start our second lesson on proportional relationships. Make sure you have your math journal and your lesson worksheet out and available. And we're going to start with example one about the yogurt shop. So go ahead and read the problem. You're going to show your work and take notes in your math journal. First of all, let's answer a couple of questions. Remember to either do two columns, one for your initial answer and the second column for uh, any revisions or revised answer or the correct answer, as you will. Or you can do two rows, however, uh, whichever way works best for you. So our first question, does everyone pay the same cost per ounce and how do you know? So pause the video, answer the question in your own words, and then continue the video to find out how close your answer is or if you are right on. All right, once you've answered this question, what you should have said, hopefully, was yes. Everyone does pay the same cost per ounce. It costs about 40 cents per ounce. And if you divide each cost value by its corresponding weight, it will give you the same unit price or unit rate of 40 cents. Since we want to co compare the cost per ounce, we can use the unit rate to determine that we want to divide each cost value by the corresponding weight value. So division in this case will give us our unit rate and it happens to be proportional. Well, Isabel's brother takes an extra long time to create his dish when he puts it on the scale, it weighs 15 ounces. If everyone pays the same rate in the store, how much will his dish cost? And how did you calculate the cost? So calculate the cost for 15 ounces using the rate and explain how you calculated that cost. All right, you should have come up with $6. And notice that if you multiply the number of ounces by the constant, which is the unit rate or the cost per ounce, it's going to give you the total cost. Remember that was 40 cents. Since this is true, we say cost is proportional to the weight. So on your lesson worksheet, go ahead and complete the statement that cost is proportional to weight. And make sure you write this in your journal also. When you are done, go ahead and continue. All right, what happens if you don't serve yourself any yogurt or toppings, how much are you going to pay? Well, you should have said zero dollars. And does the relation, relationship above still hold, hold true? In other words, if you buy zero ounces of yogurt, then multiply the cost per ounce, do you get zero? And even for zero, you can still multiply this by the constant value to get the cost. Not that you would do this, but we can examine the situation for the sake of developing a rule that is always true. So if you say zero times 40 cents, then obviously you're going to be paying zero dollars. And you always multiply the number of ounces, x, by the constant that represents the cost per ounce, in this case it's 40 cents, to get the total cost, which we're going to call y. And we can use any variables um, that those could be chosen, but for the sake of this discussion, we're going to use x and y. Again, x being the ounces and y being the cost. All right, so label the table in your lesson worksheet with the chosen variables. So what you want to do is put an x next to the weight, because we're going to represent that with the uh, variable x. And the cost is going to be represented with the variable y, as you can see here in red. All right, so for any measure x, how do we find y? Well, how for this x do we find y, which is $5 in this instance? Well, you need to multiply by 40 cents, because we came up with 40 cents is the unit price. And we're going to indicate this on the chart above. So on your lesson worksheet, you should write times 40 cents. 
And then let's show an arrow to indicate that we're multiplying 12.5 times 40 cents. And when you do that, you will get $5. Go ahead and do that with the second column. We're multiplying it by 40 cents. 10 times 40 cents is going to be $4. And do the same thing for the third and the fourth column. So therefore, y is found by multiplying x by 40 cents. And our equation that is going to come up later on is we would write this as the cost y is equal to 40 cents times x. Now you might want to say, how come we don't write 40 cents times x equals y. And be, it's because we want to know what the price is. So in order to get the price, how what is going to give us that price? What is going to give us $5? Well, 40 times 12 and a half is going to give us the $5. So this is kind of the order that we want to get used to seeing. There's a, a reason for this later on in math, why we start with y equals the constant times x. Right, example two. Again, we're going to show your work and take notes in your math journal. And this is about the corresponding or the relationship between ounces and cups. So what does the diagram tell us? More specifically, that each pair of numbers indicates a correct matching of ounces to cups. So is the number of ounces proportional to the number of cups? And how do you know? So go ahead and answer that question, and then continue. Well, if you did your division between cups and ounces, you would notice that there are eight ounces for every cup. And to get the number of ounces, you can always multiply the number of cups by eight. So we're going to complete the statement on your lesson worksheet again. Ounces is proportional to cups because every time you divide, you end up with a constant of 8. Go ahead and copy this in your math journal and note how you can tell. So give a description or explanation as to how you can tell that this is proportional. When you are done, go ahead and continue the video. Right. It is important to acknowledge that you could also divide by 8 if you want to know the number of ounces and are trying to find the number of cups. So remember, multiplication and division are related to each other. So in case you want to find the number of ounces, you could divide by 8. Or I'm sorry, the number of cups, you can divide the ounces by 8 to figure out how many cups. So you should realize the importance of defining the quantities clearly. Okay, so what are we looking for? Are we looking for ounces? Are we looking for cups? Or are we looking for the, the constant? So how many ounces are there in four cups or five cups or eight cups? And how would you know this? Well, the answer to those three questions is 32 ounces. 40 ounces and 64 ounces, and each time the number of cups is multiplied by 8 to get the number of ounces. So again, describing in words, not just with numbers, but describing in words how you are getting your answers. So for the sake of this discussion and to provide continuity between the examples that we're doing, we're going to let cups be represented by x again and ounces with y. And we're going to go ahead and label the diagram again on your lesson worksheet. And if you want to copy this into your math journal, that would be a good way to um, solidify your, your memory and your, um, your reasoning with this. So we're going to write x and y, x for cups, and y is going to represent ounces. So for any number of cups x, how do we find the number of ounces, which is being represented as y? Well, you're going to multiply it by 8. So let's show this on our diagram. Again, our cups are x and our ounces are y. 
So we are going to multiply, and again, even though it kind of sounds silly to show this, but it's still, it's true for every x. And so we have to show that 0 times 8 is equal to 0. If I have 0 cups, then I have also 0 ounces. And then show it for the rest of it. 1 half times 8 is 4. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 and a half times 8 is 12. And 2 times 8 is 16. So our equation, if I want to know what y is, I am going to multiply 8 times x. And if we want to verify that our equation y equals 8x is true, which values for x and y can we use to see if it's true? And how do you know? Well, you can use any pair of x and y variables. So we can use 1 and a half and 12. We can use 2 and 16. We can use a half and 4. And when we divide, we're always going to get 8. So again, 8 divided by 1 is 8. 12 divided by 1 and a half is 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we can show that x and y, any of those pairs will add up to, or not add up, but divide to make 8. All right, let's take a look at exercise 1. You're going to complete exercise 1 on your lesson worksheet before continuing. So go ahead and do that. And when you are done, continue the video to check your answer. All right, so compare your answer to the uh, answers here, which are located in blue. So as the number of calories burned proportional to time, how do you know? You should have said yes. The time is always multiplied by the same number, 11, to find the calories burned. So your answer doesn't have to sound exactly like this, but again, you should be writing in complete sentences and explaining why 1 times 11 is 11, 2 times 11 is 22, so on and so forth. Or you can say division. If you wanted to divide 33 by 3, you would get 11 as your constant. If Jose jumped rope for 6.5 minutes, how many calories would he expect to burn? Well, since you found 11, it would be 71.5 since 6.5 times 11 is 71.5. All right, so let's go ahead and do our third example. Again, we're doing this in your journal. And this is going to be about, uh, you're going to read the problem and answer the preview questions in your journal. So the example is on your worksheet, and we're going to uh, do the work in your journal. So how much do you think Alex had earned by the end of two, and two weeks since he's saving up? Well, he probably earned twice what he had earned in week one. So if you know how much he earned in week one, then obviously two weeks would be twice that much. How will a table help us to check Alex's prediction? Well, it's going to help us see how his earnings grow over time. That's the benefit of doing a table or maybe a t-chart. And whether he will have enough money by the end of the summer. So a table may also help check calculations for reasonableness and make sure that we don't make any mistakes in our calculations. So where did the two given pairs of data come from? Well, he earned $112 after working four weeks. Therefore, his unit rate was $28 for every one week. Or you can say the total earnings is 28 times the week number. So whichever week we're talking about. If it's week 4, then it would be 4 times 28. Is this reasonable? Does this sound like a reasonable um, word problem or real world type situation? Well, yes, this could actually be considered a minimum wage for part-time workers or maybe it's for babysitting. So this would be 
something that you could possibly experience um, in your life by depending on what type of job you get. So what other pair of data could we complete fairly easily based on what we're given in the table? Well, at zero weeks, he has earned zero dollars. Again, that's going to come in really important, knowing what is happening when there is nothing happening, in this case, at zero weeks. If at zero weeks he has made five dollars for some reason, then that's going to affect the rest of our problems. So knowing what is happening at the beginning and calling that zero is really important, even though it seems like kind of a silly question to be asking. So how will we find out his earnings after two weeks or three weeks? Make sure you write what you would, ha what those earnings would be, and explain how you find that. Well, you should have said since the rate will be the same, we can multiply each number of weeks by 28 to get the corresponding values. So two times 28 would be 56, and three times 28 would be 74, or 84, sorry. All right, so at this time, complete part A by yourself by completing the table and answering Alex's question of whether or not he will have enough money on the lesson worksheet. I know it says to work with a partner. If we were doing this in class, then obviously you would be, but if you're doing this at home, then you're going to have to do it by yourself. So when you are done, go ahead and continue the video. Right, so you should have answered yes. And again, remember to state the question as part of your answer. It's asking, will he have enough money? And you want to make sure to say yes. Alex will have earned enough money to buy the $220 gaming system by the end of the summer since he will have earned 8 times 28 or $224 for the 8 weeks he worked. And you can have a sample table or to fill, finish filling out that table to show what happens at the end of eight weeks. All right, go ahead and complete part B, answer part B question by yourself on the worksheet and then continue the video. All right, your answer should sound similar to this. And the question is, Alex's total earning proportional to the number of weeks he worked? How do you know? Well, it is proportional. There exists a constant value. So again, using our vocabulary, you can say constant value or unit rate. Uh, 28, that can be multiplied by the number of weeks to determine the corresponding earnings for that week. And the table shows an example of that proportional relationship. All right, so let's wrap this up. So how do we know if two quantities are proportional to each other? Go ahead and take a stab at answering that question. Now that you've done the lesson, you should be able to answer this on your own. Well, you should have said something in the following light. Two quantities are proportional to each other. If there is one constant number that is multiplied by each measure in the first quantity, to give the corresponding measure in the second quantity. And remember, we can figure out that constant if we do some division and find out if the ratios are equivalent to each other. So all of this is related. All right, we'll see you in class. Before I see you in class, we still have two more or one more question. How can we recognize a proportional relationship when looking at a table or a set of ratios? Well, if each of the measures in the second quantity is divided by its corresponding measure in the first quantity, and it produces the same number called a constant, or again, a unit rate or a unit ratio, then the two quantities are proportional to each other. All right, so now we have wrapped up our lesson, and we'll see you in class.